Welcome. This is 48H video 3. And we're going to talk in this section about non uniform circular motion. It's still circular motion, but the velocity or the speed uh, uh, of the object is not constant. Now, this could be because you're going around a track and you're putting your foot more on the accelerator, deliberately going faster and faster, or it could be going around a track and putting your foot on the brake and going slower and slower. Or it could be, for example, you're swinging. So you could be swinging from a trapeze and we know that the velocity is highest or the speed is highest when you're at the lowest point and you're stationary at one end and stationary at the other end. Even though this is a, a quarter of a circle or whatever, the fact that you go in a circular path means that you have a centripetal acceleration and in the middle it would be the biggest centripetal acceleration and as you went to slower speeds as you go towards the edges the centripetal acceleration would get less and less and less until you are stationary at the edge and there's no centripetal acceleration when you're stationary at the edge so an interesting, an interesting pattern of behavior here we're going to start off by looking at a circle, a full circle of motion and here's a full circle of motion and um, we have a mass we have a centripetal acceleration because it's going in a circle there must be a centripetal acceleration it's what causes the direction of the motion to change and so we have our centripetal acceleration pointing radially towards the middle of the circle and then if we are speeding up or slowing down we can represent that by a tangential acceleration which is perpendicular to the to the centripetal acceleration um, and by basically trigonometry we can basically using Pythagoras's rule actually we can combine these two to get the overall acceleration so we say if a particle uh, that moves in a circle changes speed there must be a tangential acceleration in addition to the centripetal acceleration we can combine a tangential and centripetal components of acceleration by using Pythagorean theorem. So we have the full acceleration is equal to the square root of the tangential acceleration squared plus the centripetal acceleration squared. Again, the diagram uh, tells you the mathematics, doesn't it? And then we say, okay, uh, let's do an example of this. And we say at time t equals zero, a three kilogram particle travels at eight meters per second around a circular path of radius four. So is my circular path of radius four. So my, uh, I'm gonna do it over here. My radius is four meters. Is my particle, it's traveling in a, um, it's a three kilogram particle. It travels at eight meters per second. So let's show it like this, eight meters per second. This is V tangential. Um, the particle has a tangential acceleration of plus five meters per second. So we'll have that. We'll call that acceleration tangential equals plus five meters per second squared. Uh, what is the particle's net acceleration? And what is the angle between the particle's net acceleration and the particle's centripetal acceleration? So let's put these things into our diagram. Here's my centripetal acceleration, AC. Um, actually, I'm going to draw my AT there. And there's my A. That's what I want. And I want the angle here. Okay. So I say... Ah, we have a right angle triangle. I can say A is equal to the square root of AT squared plus AC squared, which equals, do I know what AT is? I do. A tangential is five meters per second squared plus and I want AC and AC is not given 
but I have a way to find it. So let's just put this down as a c squared so we keep track. Then I come to the side and I say find a c using a c is equal to v squared over r. So a c is going to equal to 8 squared. It's the tangential velocity squared over 4, which equals 64 over 4. A C is going to equal uh, 16 meters per second squared. So then we can say A is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 16 squared which equals and that's mathematics isn't it that's that's sums so we say that this is going to equal second square root parentheses 5 squared plus 16 squared close your parentheses and pressure answer 16.76 16.8 basically so this equals 16.8 meters per second squared. So that's the that's the size of this vector a. Then the second thing we say is tan a is equal to uh, let's look opposite, which is a t, which is five divided by the adjacent which is a c which is 16 so uh, a uh, theta sorry tan theta so theta is equal to tan to the minus 1 of 5 over 16 theta is equal to and we're going to say check on in degrees yes i am i'm going to second go second tangent and it's going to be 5 divided by 16, close my parentheses, and this is going to be 17.35 degrees. 17.35 degrees. So there we have it. So there we have our two answers. Let's go on to the next one. A two kilogram ball is attached to a two gram ball is attached to a branch. So we have a two kilogram ball. We have a branch. Uh, the ball is swung in an arc forming a pendulum. The speed of the ball at its lowest point. Oh, so let's look at this. Lowest point is seven meters per second. What is the tension in the rope at the lowest point? Tension. Oh, okay. Let's think about what's missing from this diagram. Well, of course I have a centripetal acceleration. Points towards the middle of the circle, which is the branch, so it points upwards. And I have a weight. 20 newtons. Um, and that's about it. So I can. So now my my perception. I am looking at this. That's what I'm looking at. And I can say, well, there's an acceleration there. So the sum of the forces vertically is equal to m a, which equals m a c, which equals m v squared over r. I look and I say plus t added to minus 20 is equal to 2 times 7 squared over, do I have a radius? 4 meters, didn't put it on my diagram, shame on me, 4 meters divided by 4. So T is equal to 2 times 49, 7 sevens, 
divided by 4 plus 20. So t is going to equal a half of 49, which is 24.5 plus 20. So t is going to equal 44.5 newtons. And there we have the answer. Now, some people try to do this piecemeal, and they say, well, this tension must be supporting the weight, so there must be a 20 newton somewhere. And then this force must be providing the centripetal acceleration, so there must be a... Uh, mv squared over r um, and so they can get it piecemeal but as often as not people will forget one or other of them and so I look at this and I see it very much as the same old same old it's just Newton's second law applied vertically on a diagram so if you draw good diagrams and you think about Newton's laws you can solve things that you you've not necessarily come across in the past it's not memorizing the problem, it's always memorizing the approach. And there we have it. Thank you.